Hello, did you know that SMEs contribute 50% to our nation's GDP? And SMEs employ 70% of our total country's workforce. However, SMEs die at an alarming rate of 50%. It is for these reasons that we have created the Enterprise Show to discuss issues around SME survival, SME scalability, and SME growth. Are you an entrepreneur? Do you think you are not being heard enough? Follow us on all our social media handles and subscribe to our YouTube channel to be part of the Enterprise Show. I am your host, Kemp Horn Deke. Hello guys, welcome to another episode of The Enterprise, where we talk about issues around startups, SMEs, and every other business guy in Akwaibum that wants to grow and scale. Thank you very much for joining us again on this other episode. Um, on this episode, I have an amazing entrepreneur with me. He's a business developer. He has worked with the Bank of Industry. He's a Tony Elumelu Foundation mentor. He has worked with the British Council. And of course, he is a World Economic Forum Global Shaper. Welcome to the enterprise, Mr. Ubong Yang. Thank you very much. It's good to have me here. Yep. So how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. Good to be here on the enterprise. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, walk me through a little bit your business journey. How has it been so far? It's been inspiring. It's been great working with um, startups and uh, businesses in Akwaibum State and across the country. I've been working with startups, helping them to develop um, business models, business plans, proposals, and dotting the I's, crossing the T's of the day-to-day -day businesses experience. So, so when did you start this? Mm, 2015. 2015. Were, were, you, were you taking on a job before then? Did you quit your job I, to come I and do I this? I had to quit my job to do this. Where were you working? Working in Worry then. Oh. A, yeah, working in Worry. So you decided to come back home. You got that, I think I think that's part of the Dakada spirit. You decided <laughs> to come back home to help build and support a choir. Thank you very much. It's it's good to have you. Um, so, in thinking of a topic for you to discuss, I had to find the very difficult part of building a startup because I mean you have worked with startup for with startups for a very long time. So I, I, I thought of giving you that very difficult part. So explain to us, and we'll be talking about customer acquisition customer acquisition and um, we just want to know basically everything there is because I mean the lifeblood of every business is the customers right if we need to make money you have to have you need to have a lot of customers right so what basically is customer acquisition to you okay so let's take it from the from the grassroots okay so customer acquisition can be purely defined very simply as the process you know of persuading people you know to become your customer. So it is like a process. Most times it should be systematic, you know, not a one-off process. So it's a journey anyway. So I'll call it a journey of making a customer to become consistently, you know, patronizing your brand or your products or services. Is, 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 is this a deliberate thing? And, and this is the angle I'm coming from. So, I mean, I have started my business, right? And I've opened a shop okay. and I have branded the shop, right? Is there any other deliberate thing? Is the customer acquisition process a deliberate thing or is just left to chance and luck? Well, people have seen me that I've opened and I am putting it on social media. Is that all there is to, to do to acquire the customers I'm looking for? Well, that's, that's maybe time the elementary aspect, okay. you know. Basically, everybody knows starting a business, you know, you open a shop, like you said, you open a shop, stock your products, and people pass your streets and they branch to buy, you know. You go on Facebook, you advertise, you mention your name, you post Instagram, do the rest. Now, those are the elementaries. But you see, as, as your business grow, you, you begin to plan, you know, you become deliberate, you become proactive, you begin to ask yourself, so how do I get my first 100 customers? So you begin to talk of numbers, strategic planning, so that, 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 that will enable you to know, you, you now sit down and know that it's not just a, a magic. It's not something that you wake up and see 20 people in your shop yeah. or 50. Or you say, I want to have 200 customers yeah. by December. It's, it's not going to happen by magic. Yeah. So that's why it's a, it's a process, it's a planning. 
you know, you need to sit down, you know, sit down with maybe a business development expert or sit yeah. down with your team okay. and say, okay, how do we get our first 100 customers? So that's a question on the table. So you begin to dissect. And like I said, it's strategic planning, implementation, you front and back. And at the end of the day, you measure your results. So let's even, let's even go back to the very beginning and talk about the customer itself, okay. right? Um, at what point does an SME, does a startup um, segment its customers? Do I begin to think of who are my customers at the time I'm conceiving the idea? Or do I think who are my customers after I have conceived the idea? And, and why I'm asking this is because often we have, um, when you have an idea, yeah. it's as if you need to implement that idea <laughs> exactly, today. Exactly, so yeah. the only thing you are thinking of in your head to is to implement the idea. Yeah. So you are not thinking of customer, you're not thinking of who will buy. The idea just comes and of course, maybe in a vision, you were sleeping and boom, <laughs> the idea comes. Or maybe it's working for every other person. So everybody is doing business A, and I mean, everybody is selling this thing and it's working for them. So let me just go into it, right? Maybe I would find it, because if everybody have customers, I would have it. And I mean, there is luck, yeah. right? There <laughs> is fit, there is every other thing. So at what point do you begin to think who are supposed to even be my customers? Because I think you have to identify them first before you think of acquiring them. Do you think before implementing the idea or after the idea has been implemented? Okay. Um, um, now, the first thing that happens to maybe a startup, you know, you have that moment, that wow moment where you have the idea. And it's amazing. That's always like the bet of every business is, you know, you have an idea, a winning idea, like I need to start this business as fast as possible. I need to get this business to the street. Now, in business development, how you, how you structure a company, starting a business, one of the first things you need to do is to test, you know, there's a testing process. Okay. After, yeah, you need to test your business idea. For instance, if I want to sell, let's, let's be practical now. Yeah. Okay. So let's, I have an idea. I want to sell Gary in my neighborhood. Okay. You know, I live in an estate, maybe full of houses and homes. And I know that there are several women in my estate. Yeah. So I want to start a Gary business. You know, I want to be selling Gary from door to door, house to house. So I have a wonderful idea, brilliant idea. I have the money, the capital. So one of the first thing I do advise startups to do is to test the business idea. Now, there are, there are various ways you can test them. Maybe by, um, you can do a questionnaire or you ask word of mouth okay. or marketing. So, okay. so I, I could take a stroll along my street. Maybe if every evening I say, okay, I'm going to be talking to five women every day, you know, within my street. So I could, I could just ask, uh, Madam, I greet you a good day. Madam, where do you buy your Gary? You know, how, how much is Gary now? No, these are, these are questions that will form my business development, yeah. my business year process. So okay. I'll just take a random sampling, ask this woman, ah, she'll say, ah, Gary is now 45,000. I'll say, Madam, oh, I have, oh, I have, I can be giving you for 40,000 or 48 or okay. 40, no, there okay. about so. So first, when you find that person that is interested in the business and is ready to pay, okay. you understand, that's a customer. But one person is not just enough to start a business. Now, okay. having one customer for a business is yeah. not enough. So yeah. you need to also do more. Now, the volume, this is where, this way it is actually certified for you to actually put money to a business. When the volume of people that are interested in what you want to do yeah. and are ready to pay, not just interested. Someone, someone can be interested, but is not ready to pay. Whoa. Yeah. So people that are ready, you know, people that are interested and are ready to pay, so when you look at the volume of you know customers that are ready, I think that's where you can actually say, okay, I want to inject fun into this business okay. because at that level, you have actually certified the business okay. through the testing. So, so two two things for me. First, um, you either find these customers yeah. through maybe questionnaires, depending on the kind of business, or maybe word of mouth on streets yeah, and exactly. talking to people. And the worry, I mean, if we line up startups here, I think that one of the first worry they would say, what if I go and ask this person and ask the other person and ask the other person. And before I know it, somebody has done it. Okay. So, I mean, I'm at the risk of someone stealing my idea. Or imagine this estate yeah, we are yeah, talking yeah. about. No other person is selling Gary in this yeah. estate. And I'm walking around asking people, do you need Gary? Do you need Gary? Maybe somebody may just steal my idea. So can't I just go ahead and just do my thing? Yeah, Look, it's, 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 it's good to go ahead and do, but it's not advisable in a business sense. Yeah. Because any, any business that you inject money in, you are the risk of two things that will happen. One, yeah. 
is either you run away from the business or you or two you struggle with the business okay because you were not really ready for the business so okay. you just had the money and you injected into the business okay that's a mistake a lot of startups do fine ideas are everywhere people get ideas you know someone can even start your idea are you following me okay you know, yeah it doesn't it doesn't really mean that uh, you cannot actually do that same business because we have a lot of customers everywhere okay. so what people do if you go to the market you go to you see a lot of guys ibo guys selling rice all of them in the same line okay and i see making money okay are you following me yeah. so basically someone stealing your idea doesn't really mean that uh, you cannot still go ahead and do, go ahead to okay. do what you need to do okay so so how do i determine somebody who understands my idea is in need of my idea and somebody who is willing to pay to get the solution my idea is bringing how do i differentiate the two of them okay yeah because sometimes you just talk to people and people say nice idea uh, nice. Yeah. the moment you start <laughs> and say sir I started this nice idea <laughs> they are nowhere to be found how do i um sieve them and know who is willing to pay and who is just telling me nice idea yeah now that that will also depend on your design you know customer acquisition design oh you like like you know you want to acquire a customer you know most times if you look at all these uh, maybe us companies yeah. online yeah. like maybe you click a website they'll tell you okay watch this video to yeah. the end you watch yeah. this video to the end you stand to win maybe two dollars okay you know now it's a journey they know where they are taking you to the the so the the game point of that journey is to convert you from where you are to put money into that business okay so it depends on the design for instance if i meet you now and i i play my first set of design show you the idea you like it down and I say okay sir why not do this now you say oh okay i say if you do this now this is what you gain because remember every customer is looking for value everybody wants to have value every, is, the business is not just about you it's also about the customer okay you also have to understand what the customer wants for instance if the customer buys this thing today by next week it will not be this price are you following me yeah. so so you also need to design an urgency that's why you have most of these guys that do promo okay you know they do promotions in okay. companies yeah. they tell mtn they'll tell you 50 gig in one week after the one week it is over so they push they push the urgency into the minds of the consumer so if you were thinking i don't want to do this thing when well, remember that after this sunday the promo is over you put You're, money oh do you understand okay. so so is is a design is a is a customer a journey acquisition journey design yeah depending on what exactly you want to so who is who is actually more important to a business because we've i've had these conversations with a lot of startups and when we're trying to talk to them about customer relations and act- all of that who is more important to a business the owner or the customers who is more important to the life of a business the owner uh, of the business the, or the customers <laughs> the very technical question <laughs> anyway. very technical question but i would say both both parties play a lot of role okay yeah without the without the without the business owner the customer will see what you buy okay so needless of saying a lot of people say customer is king fine yeah, yeah. is it works but if the customer support works, them yeah if, support if, those if, if the customer walks into the e3 yeah customer is king he has money he walks into the e3 and yeah. if and he doesn't see any food to eat you go with this money and you will be hungry so the customer may not still be king you see so both parties play a lot of role together you as a business owner you have a role to play to ensure that the customer brings the money to you and you offer him good value the customer on the other side has his role to play by bringing the money to your business and also enjoying the value so uh, for me is a dual is a dual so thing. both of them are kings both, both of them are kings yeah. so again um i want to ask how do you know the right customers and um does the right customer transcend beyond money okay. his ability to pay mm-hmm. the only reason to say this is the right customer okay right if no how do you know who is the right customer okay. yeah yeah so so like we're talking about customer acquisition yeah. you know i was trying to do a little review yesterday night you know looking at the joining so i found out that in customer acquisition there is a three stage process first you acquire a customer like for instance this is my first time of coming to uh, nectar studio Studios, yeah. yeah okay oh you're welcome yeah so It'll ring a bell for you okay <laughs> okay so first i have walked into this place yeah now 
I, a lot of stores are playing in my mind. So I've seen a lot of stores, seen a lot of cameras, gadgets, and the rest. So I might be a customer. So the first journey is to acquire me. I walk into the premises. That's acqu acquisition, acquire. Yeah. Then the next step is to engage. You know, companies, for instance, you walk into a, a place and you make payments. The next thing, you find out that some companies begin to engage you. Let's assume you bought a laptop from Apple. Yeah. They send you an SMS or, sorry, an email getting to find out how is the, how is the laptop yeah. going. You know, after six months, do you have any issues? Do you, do you need a mouse? Do you need additional services that yeah. can be added? Now, that's engagement. You understand? Yeah. They now engage you. Then after a certain while, when you are now more comfortable with the company, you see, you see stuff like uh, companies becoming, people becoming ambassadors, loyal and loyalty ambassadors yeah. to the company. So yeah. they can now say, okay, came from now is an ambassador to Nexta Studio because yeah. maybe he has been coming to the studio, bringing business, is now part of the organization. Yeah. So he become an ambassador. So it beyond, it goes beyond payment of money. It, it's all about re repetition, making you to repeat your services, you know, mm. making you to do the same thing again and again with, with, that, same, with that same company. So that's what is that that that's what I would term repetition. You yeah. know, you keep on going there. Like people like um, Globalcom, they have a lot of musicians, a lot of stars. You know, they call them brand ambassadors. So these guys are there. You know, to promote the brand. They might not even be using. They might not even be paying money. At such a time, the the companies are the ones now paying them. Yeah. Hopefully, because yeah. they have they have actually gotten to a stage where they promote the brand themselves. They talk about it and they become like loyal ambassadors to the brand. Okay. So they, they, they could be termed as loyal customers. Oh. Loyal customers. At that level, they have transcended from just buying, you know. They are so now, making other people yeah, to other influencing, people to influencing decision. decisions. Okay. So beyond, beyond the design, after we have created this um, customer acquisition design, what other strategies, what other processes are there to the point where I can successfully acquire and keep my first hundred customers. So it's one thing to acquire them. How do I keep them? Yeah. What What are the strategies to acquire first? Okay. Then we'll talk about the strategies to keep. Okay. Acquisition. First, we have a lot of platforms you can acquire customers. Daily basis, Facebook, you know, social media, adverts, advi you know, posting on social media, thought leadership and sessions. Yeah. You know, there are people that just write sentences. Yeah. They just write stories on Facebook. The aim of such stories is at the end of the story they convert you to what they sell. You know, it's called oh. thought leadership. Okay. So you don't you want to sell rice. You don't just say I want to sell rice. You start talking about carbohydrate value of people. Yeah. From there you come down. You come down. At the end of the post you can say okay, I I sell rice in bags. You can buy this. You know, that's thought leadership marketing. Okay. That's a strategy. So you can also use referrals. A lot of a lot of people believe so much in referrals and it's, it's one of the most common um, um, system being used right now by okay. most businesses because okay. uh, I was looking at a study, they said 92% eh? 92 of every business you have done was told to you by a friend and I, I, I began to think about my life. You know? no, so so if, if you leave the reason to me, 92% yeah. of every business decision that you, t you took yeah. was spoken to you about by a friend. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm beginning to think yeah, of even it right me, now. Even <laughs> me, so, okay. so, so, so you can you can do the stats, you can do the analytics for yourself. Yeah. So you find out that we mostly believe what people tell us, yeah. and that's why in Nigeria today, even in Akwaibom, you see most companies, network marketing, all these companies, they they drive referrals. Okay. They believe so much in it. So it's one of the strategies of acquiring company um, sorry, customers yeah. for your business. So yeah. referrals. Um, social leadership. media marketing, thought leaders, thought uh, leadership, leadership yeah, yeah, conversations, and you could also you could also talk about um, there's one I want to mention. We also talk about um, strategic advertising. Okay. Now we talk about strategic advertising. You're looking at, you know, paying for Google uh, search engine optimi optimization. Yeah. yeah, Google Ads, and you know, knowing where to advertise. Okay. You know, yeah. So someone can be browsing on a, on a on a page and you see the ads coming up on the side, maybe Facebook and Google ads. Now, such ads are targeted towards what you like okay. for your conversations. Like an algorithm speaks all the stuff you have been discussing, maybe online. Yeah. If you love to talk about business on social media, on Facebook, 
you find out that most be, most adverts that comes up while you are chatting or or doing your scrolling are returning to business, maybe business school. Yeah. So if you if you are if you, are, you love fashion, so the algorithms brings out the adverts you know, around, around fashion. fashion. Okay. Yeah. So these are these are the forms, yeah, of these are forms of acquiring customers. So what are the f- forms or the strategies of keeping these okay. customers? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So when once these customers are now in your businesses, yeah. so you begin to look at how to keep them. Now we talk about stuff like promotions, promos, you know, events. You understand? Yeah. Now you see companies like um, all these companies like maybe MTN and ATL, they are always putting up promos. Now, if let's let's bring it down to a startup. Yeah. Because those ones yeah. are those yeah. ones are big companies. Really big they guys. Those bring yeah. a startup. So if you're a startup and you have already started your businesses, yeah. you should be able to design programs every week. Now it, it mustn't be it mustn't be sorry not every week maybe monthly, it mustn't be cost you know cost uh, overhead Dependent should be not large yeah. yeah but but some creative uh, programs some creative uh, promos yeah. like now I do business plan I could say okay for the month of August September I'll be writing ten business plans for ten people at a discount of twenty percent okay you no know, so those are stuff that get people engaged yeah in your business yeah. so we're talking about engagement now because when you bring the people you don't need to keep them idle because if someone just there in your page yeah every morning just there nothing's happening in your page your facebook page is just there nothing is happening you're just there you know it gets bored and yeah. attention span goes away so yeah. you need to engage the customers give them freebies people people talk about uh, giveaways <laughs> Okay. You know, all these giveaways. These are these are these are strategies. Different forms. Yeah, to, forms to keep of them. engaging your customers, keeping them close to your business. Okay. Yeah, so, so because some of some of the um, startups we, we deal with at the Enterprise Center are really very seasonal businesses. So maybe somebody sells umbrella. Okay. And you know that when the sometimes when you have the dry season, a lot of people do not need umbrella someone is selling um sweatshirts when you have the dry season a lot of people do not need sweatshirts so how do they keep those guys till another okay. season okay. where they now need to okay. advertise to them again to buy because sometimes um when there's that stretch the customer is yeah, gone he has yeah. found another alternative yeah. mm-hmm. these measures you're talking about are they strong enough to keep those people yeah, they, yeah. They, they, it depends on it depends on your strat- marketing design. Okay. So, for instance, um, if you're not doing promo, most customers can be engaged by thought leadership. Yeah. You know, conversations. You know, you talk about like the, we we are about entering the maybe we're already in the rainy season right now. Yeah. So you talk about the weather, you know, the effects of the weather on the skin. You know how to protect your skin from social sicknesses and the rest. So, these conversations are what customers wants to hear okay. but people don't just want to buy people don't just want to be sold to they don't just want you to sell something to them they want they, they actually love the idea that it is them that bought it i don't know i don't know okay. if i'm making sense okay yeah for yeah. instance now you are selling a wash i i don't want to be the one to just that because you convince me i want to buy the wristwatch i i want i want to be able to see something about this wash and buy it from my pocket so now, it's perception that's, you are buying thank you yeah. thank you so so customers want to see the value. They want to see the value statement of what you are actually telling them about, what you are actually selling to them. So with that, there, there are a whole lot of strategies which may not be able to mention because of time. Fine. So, mm. so you keep talking about marketing design and your strategy and all that. What do you think, in your opinion, are the most common forms of marketing mistakes that startups make okay. that actually inhibits them from thriving as well as they should do or from scaling their businesses? Yeah, one of the mistakes is, um, I would say, a very great, a very um, large mistake to a large size is um, funding. People don't really budget what they want to do. Okay. You know, you just want to advertise. I want to, adver- I want to do billboard. Okay. I want people to see me, you know, you, you know, you just do a billboard. I want to, you know, I want to pay for sponsored ads. Okay. The first question you should ask as a startup because you have a limited budget. Remember, startups are companies with a little amount of budget, you yeah. know, yeah. And, and they need to work with that budget. So you need to ask yourself, what is the budget size for me? How much do I really have for adver- advertising? Okay. How much can I pull out for my business? 
because you don't need to pull out your daily operations. You don't need to you, you don't need to remove money that you should be buying fuel for the office to be running. Yeah. And you say I've done that bit. So every other business every other thing can wait. <laughs> every other thing can wait. We are we have done that bit. We are doing that bit in a plaza now. Okay. So the the company the staff salary should suffer. Every other thing should should be on hold. Okay. Are you following me? Yeah. So you need to first know how much is the budget. What's the budget cost for advertising? Now, when, when once you can identify that, now the next question is, how can you do this sustainably? You know, is it a one-off thing? Because remember, advertising or marketing, it has it, it has to be a continuous process. Yeah, you you can you can sell something today and tomorrow you're not talking about it again. People, the attention span is like I was reading something on Forbes magazine. They said they said that an average U.S. citizen, eh? Is bombarded with like five thousand adverts every day. So imagine the attention span yeah. of people. So you need to be consistent. That means that the budget has to be consistent. You know, planned for. That's number one. Yeah. Then, then what, another mistake people make is that we, we most times, we, we most times um, forget the environment that we are. You know, trying to duplicate business systems of uh, maybe America. Or maybe Lagos, or even business system that you had that is working some way okay. in your locality. Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is you need to be real, be yourself in your locality. You know. I would like I would even like to say enter the streets okay. and and hear the things, hear the business for yourself. Don't try to don't try to copy what what you read maybe yeah. on a, on Harvard Business Review. Okay. And, and you say you want to use it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it forms part of research. Yeah, they will yeah. tell us to research. So when we read it, we just come and implement. <laughs> so, 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 okay. So, so, so you need to know what works. What works here? Like in this climb, what works? There, 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 are, there are stuff that works in this uh, climb. So you need to look at it critically before you start planning to put money into anything. For instance, you want to get a shop. Question is, this shop you want to get, eh? How many people are even passing through that route? That's number one. What's the volume of traffic there? Number two, I, will you be able to recover this shop in the next one year? Number three. So a lot of questions need to be asked. If not, just keep your goods in your house and be selling <laughs> them from there. Okay, so so what is your what is your biggest business failure? What do you consider to be your biggest business failure and how did you deal with it? Okay. One of the biggest business failure I've had was, uh, I, I can say it because it's a lesson for me. Yeah. Um, um, assumption. Assumption. A assumption. Now, okay. early assumption was what killed that business. Now, I had a project with the, we had a project with the state government. We tried to cultivate a certain hectare of land for Moringa project. It was a Moringa pay project. So we, we actually did a, a proposal, you know, we presented and we got the land, a large expanse of land. Now, we went to the farm. We ordered for seedlings, you know. <laughs> and another assumption we didn't do was that we just ordered for the seedlings. Okay. And we, we cleared the land and we started planting, you know. And the stuff was not growing. You know, after putting in so much capital into the place, it wasn't growing. The crops were getting stunted. Okay. And every day you keep losing money. You need, you need to weed the farm. And, you know, at a certain point in time, we just told our guys, look, we need to put this for the task because we, because we, we did not actually do the right stuff. Okay. What, what we should have done was that we should have actually tested the seedlings that we got. So when we met a professional uh, scientist, soil scientist, he said, one, that the seedlings were over, I think, over 90%. The 90% the yield value of the seedlings was, was gone. Okay. So we're just planting something that will not even have given us any harvest. Whoa. So so that was an assumption. Yeah. We just assumed that and since it was seedlings that was so gotten from so a distributor yeah. that we knew that, you know, we let's plant it. But we would have done the so, uh, seed test, you know, yeah. and know the, uh, the uh, actual size of uh, yield growth for the seed before we okay. went on the business. So we, we actually lost, lost that deal and we actually learned our lesson. It was a very hard lesson. <laughs> so what, one, of the, one of the things I, I tell startups is this, before you put money, into every any business. Yeah. Test and questions all the assumptions. Don't assume, you know, businesses, you don't assume anything. I'm telling you, don't assume. Like now you can assume that if you bring shirts from Dubai 
Kenfon is wearing a very nice shirt. So if I go and bring shirts now, Kenfon will buy these shirts. And Kenfon even has money, you know, he's working with the <laughs> enterprise center, he has money, so he's gonna buy these shirts. And you now bring the shirts and you may have missed. <laughs> <laughs> I came home not buy just okay. one shirt. So, okay. so assumption for me, assumption in business one of the biggest mistakes that I won't like any startup enter- entrepreneur to go into. So, so that points to the fact that even with all your experience in business, once in a while people are bound to make those mistakes. Can you please give exactly. me your final word to SMEs wow. before we go? Your final thoughts to SMEs before we go. Okay. Put into consideration again that. We employ 70% of <laughs> the workforce in this country yeah. and we contribute 50% to the GDP. So when you're advising us, advise us <laughs> understanding that we are big people. Your final thoughts for SMEs? Uh, yes, I, I, I love to advise you as a, as a brother in the ministry. <laughs> 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 because all of us are startups. Yeah. yeah so so my, my final word to startups would, would be um, believe in the process and see how you could innovate as the time is changing. So that's my statement. Believe in whatever you're doing. Whatever you're doing, believe in it. Yeah. Stay in it. Don't, don't drift. Stay yeah. focused. But as you're focused, try to leverage on the newer technologies you know, to innovate. For instance, if you're doing filling station, always have in mind that one day we'll not have filling station attendants. You know, we're going to enter an era where people just drive there and they pull the machine fill their pump and go. So always be thinking ahead so that you will not be left behind. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Ubong Iyang. Final thoughts. Believe in what you're doing. Innovate. And please stay consistent. Thank you very much for tuning in to The Enterprise. Um, remember, The Enterprise is sponsored by Nectar Studios in partnership with the Aquibum State Enterprise Development Center. Please do well to follow us on all the social media handles displayed. And if you have a question, please reach out to us. Thank you very much.